It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. What a job. With £200 each. You with me? A classic car. Buckle up. And a gold to scar Britain for antiques. Oh, sorry. Ha <laughs> ha. The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. There'll be worthy winners. Yes. And valiant losers. So, will it be the high road to glory <laughs> or the slow road to disaster? Have a good trip. <laughs> this is the Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. Get your hankies at the ready. It's the road trip finale for our fun-loving experts Raj Bisram and Catherine Southern. How do you really feel now that we, we are at the end? This is it now. The last leg of our journey. Thank God for that, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. I'm only joking. <laughs> They're in a classic 1967 MGB GT, headed for beautiful Warwickshire. And with just four pounds in it, <laughs> there's everything to play for. It's good that there's only a few pounds between us. It, it shows that there's somebody else as bad as me. <laughs> and I am winning! Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> That's not the way to word it, OK? <laughs> I'm just thinking, I'm glad you stepped your game up. But will Raj finally be able to let go of those purse strings? By the end of today, I want to hear from you that you've really spent some money today. Today is your day to spend it all. Indeed it is. From his original £200, Raj has upped his coffers to £395, which ain't half bad. While Catherine is in the lead by just a whisker. Her original pot has grown to a glorious £399.66. The first potato grown in Britain that was brought back by Sir Walter Raleigh was grown in Warwickshire. Was it? Yeah, I can tell you're impressed with that. Really? Are you yeah. sure about that? I am now. <laughs> Check your facts. Our pair's road trip kicked off in Cambridge and continued around eastern England, headed north to Lincolnshire, then Derbyshire, before winding its way down via the West Midlands to Worcestershire. Wow. This 600-mile trip will conclude in Bristol. The final leg will begin some 70 miles north in Stratford-upon-Avon. How lovely. Catherine's first shop today is in Shakespeare's hometown. Tragedy, history or comedy, methinks. Well, Catherine, here we are. And in front of the jester. The fool! He's the fool! The question is, here. to buy or not to buy? <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> I bid thee farewell. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Let's hope there's no drama in Catherine's first shop. Henley Street Antique Centre. There are two floors to rummage through, so she is spoiled for choice. Hello. What's this? A silk. Love the colours here. The peacock perching on the branch. Japanese, really good, vibrant colours. When you're looking for something like this, it's important to make sure that the colours aren't faded. There's a few bits of wear, but generally speaking, that's a really nice, clear image. I'd say it's something that's probably really made more for the tourist market. Going to be early to mid 20th century but it's still nice what's on that 65 pounds hmm hmm what do you think about let's leave catherine to move on and catch up with raj he's headed five miles southwest to long marston a small village which harboured Charles II during the Battle of Worcester in 1651. Raj is seeking refuge at the Barn Antique Centre, where he's got over 13,000 square feet to explore. It's a biggie. Now, stay focused, Raj. Laura. Yes. Can I ask you some questions? Of course okay. you can. I'm really being cheeky, OK? There's a bit of a backstory to this uh, microscope that I'm interested in. A ticket price of £55. Look out, Laura. We were at an auction yesterday, and it was a really good auction, but the one thing that didn't actually make any money was a microscope, which Catherine bought. And I think it would be so cheeky of me if I can get that really cheap and it goes to auction and makes even just a little bit of profit I'd be happy. That is cheeky. It is cheeky, I know, I know, <laughs> but ah, God, that's me. Why not? Because I buy that for £20. 
I'm sure we can do something for you, Raj, but what I will have to do is call the dealer and ask. OK, if you would. Yeah, absolutely no yeah. problem at all. So, let's leave Laura to make that call and shoot back to Stratford-upon-Avon and Catherine. Now, what has dealer Stephen got in his counter? Your little brooch there. OK. With the um, music, what is it, music notes? Yeah, or little something. music notes, I think. What's yeah. that, little seed pearls? Yeah, seed pearls. Um, 14 karat gold, I think, as well. Is it 14 karat? Has it been tested? Yes, been tested, that one. I quite like that. It's quite fun with the little musical mm. notes. I know brooches aren't really in the vogue of at the moment. At the moment um, no. But I think that's quite sweet. Yeah. What's the price on that? For you, £30, a special oh, price. So. OK, and what about this one, Stephen? Uh, lovely little piece. Bought both of them at a reasonable price. So. Oh, did you? Watch out, Stephen. Yeah. So Can this they one... be sold at a reasonable <laughs> price? Yeah. That is the question. <laughs> Hopefully. So this one you say was around uh, thirty pounds. We'll let that one go up, uh, and this one to help you out eighty pounds. Eighty. Could I possibly buy that at twenty-five? Ooh. And what did you say for that one? Eighty. 80 ideally. Yeah. Should we say a hundred for the two then? Can we do that? Yeah, one hundred yeah. for the two. Oh, Stephen, yeah, I like you. I'm glad I came <laughs> in. Right. You're welcome. I shall pay you okay. before you change your mind. Yes, quick. That's a great deal, you know. Catherine's off to a flying start. Thanks a <laughs> lot. Bye. Bye. Right, what news has Laura got on that microscope? We wouldn't normally go down so low, but it turns out he's got quite the cheeky sense of humour like yourself and has said yes. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Thank you. Thank Good. you so much. Not Laura. a problem at all. That's Glad fantastic. Oh, that's great news. £20 for it. It isn't as good as the one that Catherine bought, but oh, this is going to be interesting, isn't it? <laughs> I can't wait for the next auction now. <laughs> well, that was a successful cheeky first buy for Raj. Anything else? These are quite nice chairs. I mean, they're not really my thing. These are very, very modern design. They almost look like they're Danish. Let's have a look. <clears throat> yeah, this says uh, Danish designer chair. It's got £35 on the ticket. That's for each chair. Oh, yeah, £210 for the set. But they're no antique. I mean, they're probably around 1970s, 1980s, these chairs. They're in good condition. This is a real possibility. Time for some help. Dealer Liz, you are needed. I have to say, it's just so out of my field. But I like them. I think they're great design. Yeah, they're nice they're design, nice, nice clean shape. design and yeah. simple. What would be the best on them? If I say 140, is that any good for you? I'll be honest, it's not a bad price. What about £90? OK, if you can do 95 95 We'll have a deal. At £95, I'm going to shake your hand. Lovely, thank that's you. That's great. Well done. Add £20 for the microscope and that's a spend of £115. Raj, you have outdone yourself. Meanwhile, Catherine has taken our journey 17 miles north to Royal Leamington Spa in the heart of Warwickshire. Catherine is headed to Leamington Spa Art Gallery and Museum to hear about the town's connection with the free Czechoslovakian army during the Second World War and an audacious plan to assassinate one of Hitler's inner circle. Following the Nazi occupation of Czechoslovakia in 1939, the Czech army was disbanded. However, with men still willing to fight, one option was to volunteer with the Allied armies, leading to 4,000 military personnel from Czechoslovakia being deployed to Leamington Spa to take up training. One of those men was George Pavel. His family still live in the town, including his daughter-in-law, Georgina. How these foreigners, basically, were integrated into... British society into Leamington Spa. They were welcome. They were families. They took them home for dinner. They were very kind to them. Very good musicians came with the army, and so they did concerts uh, here in Leamington Spa. They played football. They were having actually quite interesting social life. So they were really brought in yes. to the families. Yes, and that's fantastic. Many of them uh, met English girls and even married them and uh, had their uh, children. However, with war still raging across Europe, it wasn't long before a number of Czech soldiers were chosen to train as paratroop agents by the British Special Operations Executive. They would be tasked to carry out sabotage missions in their homeland. They started to train people, like my father-in-law, to come to 
do covert actions in um, what used to be Czechoslovakia. A top secret commando unit was assembled and with a visit from Winston Churchill there was little doubt about the importance of their missions. So this is the army here? Yes, this and we've are got Churchill. Yes, inspecting them. In, literally inspecting them. I yes. mean, he really is, isn't he, the way that he's looking at them. Yes. And, of course, uh, President Benesch was also very proud that Churchill actually came to see the Czechoslovak soldiers. A select few were enrolled into what was to become known as Operation Anthropoid, an assassination attempt on one of the main architects of the Holocaust and close confidant of Hitler, Reinhard Heydrich. It wasn't easy because he was guarded mm. and they had to find the way how to do it. We have here the order when it was decided, you can see here. Oh, this is a copy of the order yeah. that they were given? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. And it says here, the object of the operation is the assassination of Herr Heydrich. The time and the place of this operation will be decided on the spot, but the two agents concerned have been trained in all methods of assassination known to us. Yes, I'm afraid, yes. Brutal. Yes. This high-risk plan was further fueled by Obergruppenführer Heydrich's violent destruction of the Czech resistance. Heydrich was seen as a natural successor to Hitler. His death would be a psychological, if not strategic, victory for the Allies. And so it fell to the two key players of Operation Anthropoid, Joseph Gavchik and Jan Kubisch, to carry out the attack. On May the 22nd, 1942, news arrived that Heydrich was shortly to leave Prague. En route near Prague Castle, Heydrich's convertible car slowed to take a sharp corner where the anthropoid pair lay in wait. Gabchik opened fire, only for his gun to jam, but Kubisch threw a grenade, fatally wounding Heydrich. And what was the fate of the assassins? Did they manage to escape? I'm afraid not. They were hidden in a crypt in a church in Prague by the resistance. They were betrayed and uh, Nazis surrounding the whole church. There was a big fight uh, for hours and then eventually they couldn't survive and saved their last bullet for themselves. That's very sad. Yes. The killing of Reinhard Heydrich was the only assassination of a senior Nazi figure during the war. The repercussions were brutal. 13,000 arrests and hundreds of men and women were executed on Hitler's orders. After the war, many soldiers returned to Czechoslovakia, but some, like Georgina's father-in-law George, built a new life in Leamington Spa. The generosity shown to members of the once exiled Czech army continued in the years that followed. I think the uh, British people understood how difficult it was for them when Czechoslovakia was mm. overrun and what they were facing, so they were very supportive of them. Mm -hmm. A memorial fountain in the shape of a parachute sits in the town's Jefferson Gardens. It commemorates the courageous men of the free Czechoslovakian army and their time in Leamington Spa. Meanwhile, Raj is back on the road and heading for the charming Warwickshire village of Little Alm. And the location of his last shop. What's the mood in the MGB? Well, I'm really happy with uh, today's buys. My really, really cheeky buy, which is either going to make Catherine very happy or very cross, is my microscope. I saw it, I had to have a go at it. Let's hope Catherine doesn't have a go at you, Raj. <laughs> But what can you find in Fabulous Finds Antiques? There are three showrooms over two floors, so lots of stock. But where to start, eh, Raj? Well, of course, you could always take a canter at it. I mean, this is a, a lovely shaped 19th century Canton dish with a sort of Femi Rose uh, pattern. Ticket price? £85. For me, rose actually just means pink family. That's it. what it means literally translated. It's a very, very unusual shape. It has got a downside, and the downside is that we can see that we've got a crack that runs all the way through on the top, and if you turn it over, it's got another one that goes through here. If I can get that at the right price, that might be a very nice little lot. Well, that's a cracking start. <laughs> Raj is on a roll today. This is a blue and white Chinese 19th century 
mug. It sports a £75 ticket price. This is in good condition. There's no markings to the base of it, but you can definitely see that it's a, a nice 19th century one from the glaze that's on the inside. It's got a, a nice pattern on it. There's a lot going on on this. This is really quite nice. Time to talk money with dealer Caroline. Stand by. I quite like it. This side's fine, but can you see here? It's got this huge crack all the way across. What's the very best on it? I think I could probably do that 50. 50 pounds? Mm -hmm. What about if we put this into the equation? If I were to buy the two yes. as one lot, what could you do the two for? I think if you bought the two, I could do them for 100. What about if I said 80 for the two? OK, I think that's a little bit tight. Um, could we do 90 meet halfway? I'm not going to quibble. Ninety pounds. Let's shake hands. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. No, thank thank you, you very much indeed. Well, that's great because I'm going to put those two as one lot. Oh. So I'm okay. still got money to spend, and I'm going to keep looking. Good grief, Raj! You are a man on a mission today. What in the world will you find next? A globe. I love globes because they tell you about the social history of the world and how the world, especially today, has changed. And this one is dated 1946. And uh, so countries that some people have never even heard of, for example, Ceylon comes to mind, Belgium, Congo, places that don't really exist, French West Africa, lovely thing. I mean, what's the price on the price ticket? We've got £90 on the price ticket. I mean, at auction, that's going to make 40 to 60 pounds. That's what they fetch at auction. Time to speak to Caroline again. This globe, I quite like it. Yes. But I think you know as well as I do what they're going to make at auction. I do. How about 40 pounds? 40 pounds. Yes. Okay. I think at 40 pounds, yes. I've got a chance, but only a slight chance. I, I, I love them, though. They are wonderful, aren't they? I think so that you've got a chance at auction. We'll do it then. You're happy with I that? I think we'll do sure? 40, yes. 40 Let, pounds? Let's do that. I'm definitely going to buy it. Go on then. Thank you so much. No, you're welcome. Fantastic. You're welcome. Brilliant. Raj is actually spending some cash today. That's 90 pounds for the famille rose dish and the Chinese mug to add to the 40 pounds for the globe. Raj has spent 130 pounds, all in one shop. Blow me down, all at once. That's all the shopping done for today then. Time for Catherine to join Raj in the MG. So what has been your favourite part of the journey so far? I love the sea and I love that Suffolk coast that we were on. I don't remember that at all. I, I think you were there on your own, Raj. That's why it was memorable. I wasn't there. Oh, maybe that was the year. Uh, maybe that was last year on holiday. Nighty <laughs> 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 night, then. It's a damp start for day two. Emotional also. Get your hankies out. It's our last oh. shopping day together, Raj. This is oh, the end. I know, I know. Don't. I'm sad. Oh, tragedy. <laughs> Catherine, this is a little bit dicey. We're coming up to a ford here. This is not a ford. This is a river. Oh, can you swim? <laughs> well done. Was that well done? Yeah, that are you impressed? Well Raj, yeah. why are you holding on? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's his age, dear. Well, he's certainly not been holding back from the buying. So far, Raj has bought four lots, the set of six Scandinavian chairs, the boxed microscope, the Chinese dish and mug, and the 1940s Philips Globe, leaving him with £150. This is going to be interesting. Meanwhile, Catherine has just bought one lot so far, the Edwardian brooches. Can they be sold at a reasonable price? Yeah. That is the question. <laughs> leaving her with a substantial £299.66 to spend today. Revved up and ready to go, Catherine's dropping Raj off in Solihull, where he's got a date with a local legend, which came into being just down the road in Birmingham, the iconic Norton Motor Bicycle. Museum director James Hewing is going to guide Raj through the story of the most famous name in British motorcycle racing history and reveal how it played a significant role during the Second World War. Let's start with the earliest Norton in the collection just through here. Fantastic. The firm was founded in 1898 by James Lansdowne Norton, originally producing bicycles. However, when the company was contracted in 1902 to make frames for a powered bicycle, it inspired Norton to launch its own motorbike, the Enerjet. 
Well, this is one of three um, of the earliest surviving machines made by, by Norton, dating from 1903. All this kit, what are these levers for, for example? On early motorcycles, the throttle, as it were, the air mixture, the timing, everything was controlled by levers, so much more complicated. And uh, you can imagine your hands would have been going yeah. like this. You were, you were very busy just keeping the thing running properly. With the focus now solely on motorcycle production, the Norton name was destined to become associated with sporting success. And it wasn't long before Norton bikes were winning major races around the world, including the biggest. Next, we've got one of the pride of the collection, Raj. We've got the Norton that um, actually won the, uh, the first TT in 1907. Is this it? Yeah, it is indeed, yes. Wow, the, uh, we. A lot of people uh, have heard of the TT because still going today in very famous road race yeah, yeah. Um, on the Isle of Man. The most challenging motorcycle race in, in the world for sure and uh, we're lucky enough to have the machine that won, won the first event. Incredible. So how fast did this one go? Well, this one, he actually averaged over the course about 42 miles an hour. And that doesn't sound a lot, but if you think about the, the rough road conditions, the size of the tyres, the, the lack of brakes, he was probably 65, you know, 70 miles an hour, heady speeds to, to actually average um, 42 miles an hour. I noticed that this number plate is the same one that's on that bike there. So is that the guy who rode that bike? That's right, yes. It's a gentleman called uh, Rem Fowler. And that's uh, a contemporary picture uh, from the time of this very machine, yeah? Fantastic. But there's one thing I've got to do before we go. This is the child in me. Everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. The outbreak of World War II would change Norton. It became one of the most important military motorbike producers of the conflict. Its machines were used for reconnaissance, convoy control and escort duties. What the military loved about these Norton singles, and they, they called them side valve sloggers because they were low revving and they slogged away and they were very, very reliable. They proved to be very reliable in some very adverse conditions. Can I have a sit Absolutely. on it and see how comfortable it was. You, you, you have a sit, okay. yes. I mean, they covered some ground on this. There been a lot of bouncing up and down. And a, a lot of bouncing up and it, down, it, it yeah. It would be quite fit to... Uh... Very fit, yeah, yeah. I think uh, a lot of these guys, obviously, they'd trained as regular soldiers but before they were seconded um, to be dispatch riders, but uh, they had to be extremely fit, yeah. At the end of the war, Britain was financially destitute and the government encouraged manufacturers to sell their products abroad. Consequently, Norton motorbikes were made almost exclusively for export and rare to buy at home. James, there has to be something really special about this bike because there's 849 in there <laughs> and there's one out here. Why is this one so important? Well, Raj, this one was actually uh, given to George Formby um, oh. of the ukulele fame, yeah. presented to him at the factory gates in Bracebridge Street um, in 1947. Huge publicity, obviously, for them, because you've got to remember what a big star Formby was post-war. And to get a bike new in this country was, was unheard of. Well, you had to be George Formby. Is this a bike, James, that I'm allowed to sit on? Well, you know, Raj, we can do more than that. Let's go out on it. Let's, wow. Let's take it for a spin. Uh-oh. There goes our bother boy. I'm the ukulele man. Well, I never. Meanwhile, Catherine is headed to Coventry and Green's home and garden. Hello, sir. Oh, hello. Who might you be? Charles. Hello, Charles. I'm Catherine. And she has a smidge over £299 weighing down her purse. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure, yeah. OK, I'm not a big doggy person. But look at these! Staffordshire poodles. Little porcelain doggies like these were popular ornaments in the early 20th century. Oh, gosh, they're actually really horrible. The 1920s, I would say. I think I like them because they're so horrible. And they're horrible pebble dash mane. £49. If I could get those for about 20-ish, somebody at the auction will love them because they're poodles, I'm sure. The thing is, they're not uncommon. These things were produced en masse. But to find a pair in good condition, 
They are a possibility, and I have just seen enamel brooches. Two of them. Look at those. They're stunning. Let's have a look. This one straight away, I'm turning it over and I can see that it's not silver. And there are no marks whatsoever. But the butterfly itself is beautifully enameled. There's no cracks, there's no damage. Because once this chips, it's really hard to repair. Now this one I love. It is silver, which is a good sign. I think together they could, they could work. What's the price? 68 pounds on the silver one and 20 pounds on that one. Time to talk to Charles. OK, this is not me and this is not the norm. This is not something I would normally buy, but poodles. Ah, yes. <laughs> there are 49 pounds on those. What, do you know what you could do on those? 35, maybe. Not sort of 25? 30. 30, OK, right. Keep that thought in mind. Okay. I also saw these two brooches. Yes. What about prices on those? OK, uh, we could do that one. We could go down to about 13 on that one, 40 on that one. 53, then, for the two? Call it 50 for the two. And what did we say for the poodles? I think we finalised on 30. 30. If I took it all, mm -hmm. could we say 25? And could we say 40? 65, I'd... Go on. Go From on, one then. poodle, go on. Yes, one go poodle on, lover to another. You're buying three items, so yeah? we, Is can, that all right? we can do that, yes. OK. Put it there, Put Charles. It there. OK. A few more lots for auction. Well done, Catherine. Now, how about Raj? He's headed for Coventry and his final shop, Antiques in a Barn. He's got £150 burning a hole in his pocket. Hello. Hello. I'm Raj. Hello, Raj. I'm Diane. Have a look around and hope okay. you'll find something nice. Catherine will be here soon, OK? Right. You don't have to be so nice to her. OK. OK, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. She's no, lovely. No, She's not. absolutely lovely. Better make the most of that head start, then. Oh, there's something really lovely here. It's a Scottish mull, which is a snuff box. A snuff mull is a Scottish term to describe a snuff container which almost always is in the form of a lidded ram's horn. I love them. I can't see the price ticket. Diane? This looks promising. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's absolutely gorgeous. It's only just come in, that has. Has it? Yeah. It's 265. Oh, dear. That's more than I've got. Do you know what the very best on that would be? I'll go and find out for you. Would you? That's OK. Do you, would want, you? do you want to carry on looking at it tomorrow? Yeah, yeah okay. I'll keep looking at it. Because <laughs> I love it. I think it's gorgeous. I mean, it's a really lovely piece. Um, it's, you know, it's got 265 on it. These usually make at auction between three and four hundred pounds. I've got 150 pounds left. It is a long shot. But I would love to take that to auction. That is a, a, that's a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Right. The best you can do on it is 200. Uh, as I say, it's only 200. been in since last Thursday, so it's... I mean, I know uh, that's fair enough. I've got £150. He won't do that. He won't do that. Sorry. No, if that's was, all I've know, got. Yeah, if it was old stock, then... No. Yeah, no, no, fair it's enough. No, I totally understand that. I think it's lovely. Raj, perhaps you shouldn't have spent all that cash earlier. But look what's arrived. <laughs> and Catherine still has over £234 still to splash. Are you having a good time? To be honest... Have I... you spent more than £5? I have spent nearly all my money, Catherine. I have hardly any... I don't have hardly anything well, let left. Me, let me go and do some shopping. OK, you, you go and do some shopping. Has Dila Malcolm got any tips for Catherine? What have we got? Oh, it's beautiful. Georgian, probably. I, I believe so, yes. That looks familiar. David name. Lindsay. So he was the farmer? Most probably. Yeah. There's certainly somebody of that name in the area today that is farming. Oh, really? Yes, we, we ah. looked it up on the net. This is fresh to the market. What sort of price? I can do you a deal on it, particularly if you buy one or two more items. So, if I put this by the till and you go and have a look, we see what we can do. That's quite exciting. It's a bit of a gamble piece, but, you know, when you see something of, of quality, it's... 
You might have talked me into that. Mike Catherine steal the snuff mull from under Raj's nose. There's lots of bits and pieces in here. It's a bit of a minefield, but I haven't actually bought a piece of silver this time, and I've just seen a, a bit of silver that I quite like. It depends who made it and what condition it's in, but this is a... I believe it's a telescopic pencil. Look out, Diane's back. Tell me what you know about this. It's silver. Yeah. It's made by a company called Samson Morden. Yeah, good company. Yeah. Yeah. It's not hallmarked, so I can't date it. Uh, it's not it hallmarked? No, there's no hallmark on there. I can't find one. What, what have you got on it? Uh, 155. What about £100? 120. I do this a lot. What about splitting the difference and calling it 110? Yes, go on then. You sure? 110 pounds? OK. Thank you very Thank much. You. Let's shake hands. Straight to the point. Well done, my friend. That's your shopping done. How's Catherine getting on? Some quite nice, cheap luggage here. This is lovely. What a lovely colour. I know it's plain, but that is actually a really nice colour. Do get looks like that these days. And straps inside to keep your woolly jumpers nice and snug. £35. It's in the bag. <laughs> Malcolm, I've left him. <laughs> the time has come, I've had enough, I'm off. Well, don't forget to take this with you. <laughs> right, I found this suitcase. I think it's quite nice. Nice colour. You've got... Is this yours? No. No. Whoever has got 35 on it. I have the power. Oh, do you? I do. I like you. I'll make you an offer on the two. My offer is... 160. I'd like to make you a counter-offer. A very, very generous... 170, with one condition, you walk the dogs. Right, here goes, here goes, here goes, here goes. No, 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 no. Pickle! Oh, God, I dropped him. Oh, my God, I'm going to lose this dog. Oh, my goodness me. What? Sit. Good dog. Good girl. Good oh boy. That was a deal, then. That was a suitcase for £30 and the snuff bar for £140. Time to return to the MG and that Thank other you. good boy, Raj. Ah. So are we thinking out of the box? I think so, for Bristol. OK. But it's quite trendy, isn't it? I yeah, mean, it's really you know, trendy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, funky things, you know, uh, unusual things, yeah. You do you, funky. I do, I do funky, I yeah. It, you know, you you know. Got, the soldiers Do you notice got when I say the word funky, I start moving? Yeah. Did you notice that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all that moving, you must be tired. Time for some shut-eye. Morning from a beautiful Bristol. That great city whose motto is by virtue and industry, and I'm sure it has more than enough of both. A big bridge, too. The Clifton Suspension Bridge has spanned the Avon Gorge for over 150 years. Today is the conclusion of this pair's road trip. After setting off from Stratford-upon-Avon, it's now time for that final auction. Our final auction. This is it! I know, That's I know. It. I'm sad it's come to an end, but I brought some friends along. <laughs> Your girls! <laughs> Today's sale is held at East Bristol Auctions. Raj bought five lots to sell here, all for a whopping £355. While Catherine also picked up five lots, spending £335. Both spent a fair whack of their starting kitties, hoping for big profits. But what do they make of each other's buys? <laughs> it's quite funny. As microscopes go, this is way down the bottom of the pile. <laughs> what can I say? It's horrible. He paid £20. And you know what? Knowing Raj, he'll probably make £40 on it, but it's horrible. This... I can't believe it's here. I offered him £150 for this, and he sold it to Catherine for 140 Why would he take less? You didn't walk the dogs. Unbelievable. <laughs> the man with the gavel today is Andrew Stowe. So what does he make of our expert's items? 
the Philips Globe is wonderful. It's exactly what people want on their desks at work. It's a classic antique, but with a little bit of a retro twist, which is exactly what people want. We've had a lot of interest in the Globe, uh, and I'm sure it'll find a new home. The pair of brooches are very nice. Uh, they're really nicely detailed, particularly the butterfly. It's bright, it's colourful, it's, it's retro and quirky. It's what everybody wants. I have every hope that, that they will do very, very well. With bidders online and in the room, it's time to take a seat. Ready for this? Oh, wow. Thank you. Our last auction. How fantastic is this? First up, Araj's set of six Scandinavian chairs. I think these have got legs. <laughs> Who wants to start me at £80? 80 I have straight in online. Anybody want five now at £80? Any advance then selling maiden bid oh, on no, the internet at £80? You okay? I'm okay. Ooh, not the best start, but don't worry, Raj, the night is young. Oh, it's so it's exciting. It's very exciting. Next, Catherine's leather suitcase. £20. Oh, at £20 now on the case. Who wants £22? Still pretty good, yeah. 22 online and 24 still on commission. 26, 28. Oh. On commission still now. 30 and 32 with me. Asking 34. It's a nice case at 34 now. Wow, takes it well online. Done. Who wants a six at 34 pounds? Selling on the internet. That's all right. That's good. Well done. A profit is a profit. You're talking about it, Raj, as if it's a million pounds. It's four pounds. Every penny counts in this competition. Will a profit gravitate to Raj's globe? It will make 80, 80 to 100 pounds. You think so? Yes. 60, 70 I have straight in on the internet now. This will do 90. Any advance now, 75 in the corner. 80, 5. 85 I'm bid, 90, 5. You were right, you were 100 right. 100 online, you were right. 10. I was wrong. No, at 100 pounds I'm bid now then on the internet. That's Any good. advance and selling it away for 100. Wow. Well done, you. Oh, good. That was good. Yeah, you, you were that right. Your, you were right. I think you your best right. buy. I think that was really, really good. That's more like it. Well done, Raj. That's an all-round success. <laughs> Thank you for that. My best buy. My only profit. Catherine's enamel brooches are next. You're a brooch man, aren't you? Oh, absolutely, yes. You can tell, can't you? Straight away. You'd look nice with a little butterfly here or a little boot. I've got commission interest here and I'm starting straight in at 30 at £32. Oh, at good. £32 now, that's who good. wants four? 34, 36 is still on commission. Yeah, lovely. At £36. It's not lovely, I paid 38, 40. 40 is still with me. With me at £40, looking for two now. Come on. At £40, asking 42 on the phone. 42 on the phone. Sorry, internet, at £42. Pounds, 44. It's got phone on it. 46 is on the telephone. Wow. Against you, internet, on the telephone then at £46. Pounds. That's good. That's good. Well done. At £6? Pounds? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Another modest profit for Catherine. You hated them, didn't you? I didn't like them particularly. Next up, Raj's Samson Morden pencil. Fifty pounds at fifty pounds on commission now. Fifty-five. Sixty. It's going up, Raj. Yeah, sixty-five. Go I'm out oh, at sixty-five no. pounds. I have on the internet. Any advance and selling for sixty-five oh, no. pounds. It did look really good up there, actually. Raj, oh, don't. Oh. Bad luck, Raj. Is that, that better? Was, that was a big mistake. Will Catherine Staffordshire Poodles make her top dog? Oh, they are so oh, ugly. Right. She wants to start me at £40. Oh. 40 I'm bid straight in at the back now. No, no. I'm bid now who wants two. On the poodles then at £40. Maiden bid now back in the room. I will take that run. Maiden bid. <laughs> That's a handsome profit. I'm happy with that. I'm delighted. Next, it's Raj's Famille Rose dish and blue and white mug. A 100 on commission now. Who wants Good. 110? On 100 for the pair now then. Who wants 110 on commission at 100? Should do more. I would have thought the internet would come in on that. Oh. Yeah. Silly. No messing about there, Raj. No lingering. <laughs> no begging. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Will Catherine's music-themed Edwardian brooches strike a chord? £36. There you go. £36. Pounds, 38, right. I paid £40 on commission. Yeah. 
42, 44, it's still here. At 44 pounds, come back 46, if you will. At 44 oh, pounds, an absentee bid. Come at 44 on. pounds. It's hard to know what to say uh, at what, times uh, like this, <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> say anything. Blimey, that hit a bit of a bum note. Never mind, Catherine. Oh, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. It's all right. It's OK. Last up for Raj is that boxed microscope. 22, please. Make 22 pounds. 30 pounds. 20 and away then. 20 I have on the internet. At 20 pounds now then, who wants two? 22 in the middle. Yes. Ask 22 pounds then in the middle of the room for 22. I was right. Yes. 22. Made a profit. <laughs> Actually, a microscopic profit, but still a profit. Sorry about that. Can I never do this with you again? <laughs> you don't mean that. You I do. Mean that. Finally, the most coveted item of the week, the Scottish snuff mull. Our last lot, nice this wonderful mull. I've got commission interest. I'm going straight in at 100. Mm. At 100 is bid. At 100 bid, that. 110, 120. I've still got 130 on commission. At 130, 140, 150 with me now. One. Asking 160 online now takes it. At 160 pounds. It's very, very nice. Yeah, at 160. Oh, oh. That's lovely. It's only made 20 pounds. Still ending on a profit, Catherine. Well done. It's been really close, hasn't it? So close. It's I mean, there's, I think there's literally that much in it. Yeah. And I think you might have just done it. Well, Should we do it all again? I'd love to do it all again with you. Come I would on, love Let's start again, right from scratch. Perhaps we should do some sums first, though. Catherine started with £399.66 and after auction costs, she made a loss of £69.32, rounding off this trip with £330.34p. Raj started this leg with £395 and after auction fees, he made a loss of £54.06. So his winning total is £340.94, making him today's and the trip's overall winner by just £10.60. All profits go to children in need. Your friends are still waiting for you. I Raj. know, I know, my fans. <laughs> what a trip. It was fantastic. I'm looking forward to the next one, Catherine. I would love to do another one with you. Come on then, let's get started. Please do. You two have been a class act. Today, how are you feeling? Fantastic. Oh, you are a devil. <laughs> We've had some mishaps. I just picked something off a shelf and I dropped it and it's gone onto the cabinet. Some unusual finds. Isn't this something you pee in? <laughs> and quality bonding. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Beautiful! <laughs> some hard bargaining from the dealers. I'd arm wrestle you for it. You would lose. And one of the closest competitions in road trip history. Come on. <laughs> My heart was going, you were supposed to be racing. I have had absolutely great fun. It has been good. Hasn't it just? See you next time.